We are in Rome on a Vespa with the sidecar. Today we will visit the whole city. We have a blanket, we have a hot water uh, bag and we are ready to go. Rome is overwhelming. It's got so much quality and quantity that uh, you almost feel lost and you don't know where to start from. So given some of us hadn't visited properly, we decided to focus it on the main attractions. The historical center of Rome is quite big. For this reason, we decided to use sidecars as a way of transport to quickly move between the different monuments but we decided to devote quite a bit of time on in particular on four monuments Fontana di Trevi, the Pantheon, the Musei Vaticani and the archaeological site around it. The first few stops of our sidecar tour were famous public Italian buildings buildings occupied by the government like in Quirinale, Palazzo Chigi, in Vittoriano, Palazzo Venezia e il Campidoglio these are all palaces that we became familiar with thanks to the news. We saw them thousands and thousands of times on TV. Another very important stop is the Trevi Fountain, which is at the very end of the Aqua Virgo, one of the 11 aqueducts within Rome. Fundamental thing to do here is to throw the coin. So you're gonna put the coin on your right hand and you're gonna to toss it over your left shoulder. But you need to keep your eyes shut and you don't look back. And also you need to make three wishes. The first one must be that you want to come back to Rome. First things first, cappuccino and cornetto, before heading to our first stop, which is the Pantheon, before the uh, queue becomes too long. The Pantheon was built on the 27th before Christ and designed by Marco Vispagna Agrippa. It was initially dedicated to every Roman god and it survived during the centuries because it was later on converted into a Christian church. It's very impressive, especially for the dome that has a hole at the top. From the hole, the sunlight comes in and it's, it's shaped in a way that uh, on the 21st of April the light uh, faces the main entrance. Another stop that we could have missed was Piazza di Spagna, also known as the Spanish Steps. We took a quick pictures on the steps and then soon we realized it became a magnet for influencers and Instagrammers. From there we moved on to Piazza del Popolo. This is where Italians and Roma specifically celebrate big elections, massive events like the final of the World Cup and the Festival Bar, which is a music festival that was extremely popular in Italy during the 90s. From Piazza del Popolo we head towards uh, uh, Vatican City, however we won't be able to see San Pietro uh, Basilica from the inside because on a two days itinerary uh, you obviously have to make choices and we decided to favour uh, the Musei Vaticani instead. Personally, I've never been a fan of museums, especially if they showcase portraits, pictures or sculpture. But the Vatican Museum? Wow, that is like a different level. Every room in the Vatican Museum is absolutely astonishing. One of the most important rooms that should be visited is the Athene School, which has uh, one of Raphael Sanzio's masterpiece, which represents the ancient mathematicians and philosophers. My 
My favorite room was the one with the giant map of Italy. It's like long, I don't know, like 50 meters, and there are these amazing maps of Italy, really detailed. I could have spent an entire life there looking at every single piece. Obviously, we immediately catch our own villages. Pordenone, Treviglio, and incredibly, there is also Rovigo, where Luce is from. And finally, the Sistine Chapel, Marvel of the World, and the masterpiece of Michelangelo. Let me hear you cannot take videos or pictures, therefore Instagrammers or influencers don't spend much time in this room, which gives them more time to look at the fantastic final judgment of Michelangelo. Here, Jesus is portrayed in a very different way from traditional iconography. He almost looks like a vengeful god inspired by Apollo. Michelangelo's humanism is expressed also in his famous frescoes on the chapel ceiling that portrays the creation of Adam. God is wrapped in a mantle that recalls the shape of a brain, the first idea, the first life, the first man. We get back on our sidecars. Roman hills have a great advantage, which is you have beautiful views from the top. One of the best is from Giannicolo, where you live past. We leave the Gianicolo and we start explores the narrow streets within Trastevere, but we can't really spend too much time, but that is really not a problem because we're coming back later in the evening. Across the Tevere River, we drive past uh, the Jewish ghetto and then through Rione Monti and finally reach our final destination, the Fori Imperiali, and obviously the most famous monument in Italy, the Colosseum. We live in our three wheels transports and it's now time to walk. Today we are going to uh, walk through. Uh, for Imperiali, Cole Palatino, and finally a visit to the Colosseum. So we're walking around the Foro Imperiale and it feels like spring, it's like it's so hot and it's genuinely the end of December 2021. These very vast archaeological sites that include the Colosseum, i Fori Imperiali, Colle Palatino, l'Arco di Costantino, eh, la Domus Aurea, gives us an idea of the magnitude and magnificence of the Roman Empire. The Colosseum is the building that represents not only Rome, but all of Italy in the world. Built in the 80 AD, could host up to 80,000 spectators during its peak. The games and activities of the Colosseum used to follow a very specific schedule. During the morning, you would have the fights between animals or between animals and gladiators. Then in midday, you would have public execution. And then in the afternoon, you would have the fights between gladiators. In the evening, we left the side cards and we decided to get lost in the narrow streets of the historical center. We follow our belly and we decided to have some stuzzichini before just jumping on an amazing carbonara that should take the We're now ending the evening walking around some of the parts that we didn't manage to visit with the sidecar. Campo dei Fiori, Piazza Navora and the Jewish Gap. Luce 
Zitin pasta gricha, which is basically the white amatrichana, and it has guanciale, the cheeks of the, uh, of the pig, and uh, pecorino cheese. <laughs> The Jewish keto, a must do is try to eat the carciofi alla Judea, the local artichokes, which essentially is fried artichokes. No, it's doppio, it's fritto doppio. Double fried. <laughs> Our strong advice is to rely on a local official guide who can really explain to you what you are seeing and what's the history behind it. It's really not uh, uh, advisable to uh, just walk around following Lonely Planet uh, advice. The risk is you spend the whole time looking up. This is all beautiful, but I don't really know what I'm looking at. The itinerary that you're watching this video, it's our view, it's our proposal to compress the basics of Rome in just two days. It allows you to see the top 10 of Rome, but also to focus on really understanding a few particular monuments of them, the most important ones. For which, as Lucio said, in our view, it's really important to rely on someone telling you the story. We got the basics of Rome, such that the next time we will visit the city, we will be able to focus on more specific things according to our personal interests. Fantastico! Ottimo!